Now, if you Google overtraining, you get about 10 million results. However, if you Google undertraining, you get about 1 million. 10 times as less. Now, are there 10 times as many people overtraining as undertraining? No. If anything, it's exactly the opposite. The vast majority of people in the gym are under training. And you probably are too. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's possible to actually overtrain when lifting weights. When most people say overtrain, they mean that they got tired, or they did a little bit too much, or maybe they plateaued, or they got a little bit sore. True overtraining syndrome is something that really only occurs either from endurance training, and a hell of a lot of it, or from endurance training combined with lifting weights, something like CrossFit. But if you're only lifting weights, the odds of you overtraining are pretty damn close to zero. And if you overdo the weights, you will break down locally in terms of injury compared to systemically. So it is really very, very close to impossible to experience true overtraining from lifting weights. Now, one of the great debates in lifting weights has been volume versus effort per set, also known as volume versus intensity. So some people prefer doing lower volume with a higher effort per set, whereas other people like to do higher volume with a slightly lower effort per set. And honestly, I think this debate in some ways is kind of silly because there is a trade-off and it is important but the vast majority of people in the gym, this curve is irrelevant. So if you look at this curve, there's a trade-off between volume and effort. So you can do more volume with a little bit less effort or less volume with a little bit more effort. But that curve compared to what most people could be doing, most people could be doing both more volume and doing it harder and their results would be better. So in essence, for the average person, the debate is pretty meaningless because if they endorse the ethos of both camps, they would get better results. Now, I have a pretty hardcore audience, I would say, so I have to disclose the fact that harder than last time and more than last time is not going to be suitable for some of you. There are some of you who are probably doing a little bit too much in terms of volume and would be better off bringing that down. There are maybe even a few of you who would be better off keeping a rep or two in reserve, especially on lower body compounds, if your form is breaking down. I've seen sets of squats where, man, if I was coaching you in person, I would have called that set five reps ago because now it looks like a completely different movement and you're barely targeting the area that you are presumably trying to target. And I think very, very low volume protocols can be a good entry point for beginners. If I had to choose between doing a lot of volume and having it not be that hard, or doing lower volume and having it be really, really hard, do the second one, for sure. Learning how to train hard and get the most out of every single set is something very, very important, and it's something most beginners lack. I'm talking 80, 90, maybe even a higher percent of people in the gym when they first get in there. They just don't know how to nail a set. And that's kind of expected because you've never done anything similar to this elsewhere. You've probably never pushed yourself really hard and it's uncomfortable and it hurts. And so racking the bar when you probably deep down still have three, four, five, six reps in the tank, that's pretty damn common. And so at the very least, high intensity training styles, they actually get you to learn what it feels like to work hard. But I think for a lot of intermediates, they plateau on this type of thing. You just don't see them. You see the very rare guy who is very sensitive to the stimulus and probably very gifted in terms of how strong they can get on low volume, and they make it. But you don't see the 90 or 99 other people who didn't. They just plateaued on that, and then they were like, oh, I guess I maxed out, or they started doing something else, and they plateaued often very, very early. You don't see the guys because it's a survivorship bias type of situation. Now, I've done a few videos on high-intensity training, and I almost always get sent this Mr. America Heart guy. Now, I don't know him. I haven't watched very many of his videos, but congratulations, you found one guy. You found one guy who got jacked on high intensity training, and he can undoubtedly produce more examples of people who had success on this type of protocol. But is he gonna show the guys who didn't make it? 
And if he claims that everyone can reach their potential on a very low volume training plan, I'm calling bullshit on that because it is very individual and there are going to be a lot of people who maybe are not as sensitive to the training, are not as gifted, are more of workhorses and can and should do more even if training to failure. And this isn't criticism of him, but I have seen a number of people who use high intensity training really just for marketing. Because it is very appealing. Oh no, you're doing too much. You're overtraining. You're overdoing it. You're doing too many sets. What you need to do is less. You need to do less. And this doesn't apply in most areas of life. Can you imagine if there was an entrepreneur who's like, you know, I'm putting in 40 hour weeks but not really seeing the results I want. Who's going to be more appealing to that person? Tim Ferriss who sneaks in with his 40 hour, his four hour work week. 40, yeah, 40, you're doing too much. Or someone who's like, you know, actually, the vast majority of successful entrepreneurs at the start, when they were really pushing things and they didn't have anyone else, yeah, they were putting in 70, 80, 90 hours a week. That is the norm for successful YouTubers, entrepreneurs, people building their own business. 40 hours a week is probably not going to cut it, let alone four. And sometimes less is more, but usually more is more. Now, regardless of if you're doing high volume, low volume, medium volume, moderate volume, a modicum of volume, you should be tracking your progress. And I recommend using Boostcamp to get the job done. Super convenient. You have it in your pocket, either during the workout or after workout, punch in your numbers. Very, very easy to use. Very convenient. And that is what I recommend. Plus, you get access to some of the best programs out there. I myself have two programs up on the app. Rampage, Ravage, and the Recovering Power Lifter program. Plus, there are lots of other programs. The vast majority of them are absolutely free. And thank you to Boost Camp for sponsoring this video. The trouble is, more is hard to sell. If you tell most people, hey, you need to be doing more, and you need to be doing it harder, and you have to manage your sleep, and your nutrition, and your stress, and your lifestyle is really not conducive to making gains past the intermediate level, and they have a goal of, Sometimes looking like me. Their goal physique on a questionnaire is me. And I want to say, hey, you have no idea what you're going to have to do to get anywhere close to this, if it's even possible, which it's probably not, because having someone else as a goal physique, that's a whole other discussion. But they don't want to hear that often. And so they'll just go to the person who promises them big results off of almost nothing, and that is not really realistic. I did a video on Vince Del Monte a while back, And he was ranting in the car. He was pissed off about something. And I think he divulged some secrets about his marketing that he probably didn't want to. And he said something that stuck with me. He said something like, if I told you how hard it would be, in reality, at the start, no one would sign up. If I told people what you would have to do to go from like a typical 30% body fat, which is the average for an American man, down to getting abs at maybe 12%, most people would not sign up. And so he has to lie. And a lot of people in the fitness industry, they have to lie because if they didn't, people would just never sign up and they would go to the person who is lying. But the reality is you might not be doing enough and it's going to be really, really fucking hard and it's probably going to take many years on top of that. And this is where people bounce from guru to guru to guru, expert to expert to expert, diet to diet to diet, and they don't see the results that they were promised because you were promised bullshit and they were always trying to give you the easy way out. It's going to be hard. It's going to be harder than you thought it would be. And that's why most people don't get the physique that they want because it is difficult, but that's also what makes it worth it. And you might be surprised at how high volume and how high quality of volume a lot of advanced natural bodybuilders do. It's a lot of work, and often it is still close to failure. And I think the screams of like, how do they recover? They get used to it. They get used to it over many, many years of training. If you do the same thing for 10 weeks, you're not going to be sore after 10 weeks. I mean, I've seen some protocols in the literature that are absolutely beyond brutal, and people get used to it. They get they get not a sore or not sore at all. Inflammation goes down and the body adapts. The same thing with higher volume protocols and even 
to failure. Now, I've been critical of the volume literature, and I still think that a lot of it is probably not as close to failure as it is touted, but the reality is there is a dose response between volume and hypertrophy, and I think a lot of people are still under training. I saw a very lengthy video on Stronger by Science with uh, Dr. Pack, Mila Wolf, and of course, Greg Knuckles, where they were talking about volume, and man, a lot of these guys do very, very high volume and high quality of volume. I saw Dr. Eric Helms on Renaissance Periodization, which is really cool to see the other day, and it was a high volume workout, still with a high quality of effort. You adapt physically, and you also adapt mentally to the point where, especially if you're choosing exercises that are fairly easy on the joints and not super systemically taxing, you can do a hell of a lot of it close to failure and probably actually benefit from that. And you have to find your own way. For a lot of people, that might be reducing volume, but probably for even more, it's going to be increasing it, especially if you're past that newbie gains phase and you find yourself plateauing. If you're plateauing and you feel good, I think tossing in an extra set or two is probably a good idea. Doing more probably won't get you less. It'll probably get you more as long as you can recover. And if you're not progressing and you feel good, why not do more? And often when people see the training plans of many advanced natural lifters, they default to either genetics or steroids. There is a genetic role here, but I think often the body just adapts. Anyone's body can adapt. Try higher volume. The worst that might happen is you pick up an overuse injury, and that's just a sign you either need to change your exercise selection or your technique or build up more gradually. That's not a sign that you can't get there in the future if you do it a little bit more intelligently. At least you learned something. More often than not, when people are like, he trains hard six days a week, must be steroids, or like, oh, he's, he's a slow twitch genetic guy. How the fuck do you know that? How do you know what my fiber type is? That's, that's ridiculous. I don't even know. I've never gotten a biopsy. Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. And so learn how to do a quality set first in terms of technique and proximity to failure. Both are very, very important. And then if you feel good and you've plateaued, both of those things need to happen, I would say add in more. If you feel good and you're not making progress and the sets are still hard, you know, volume is one of the primary levers that you can pull. You don't have to pull it super early, but once you're an intermediate, there's a good chance that you're the kind of person who will need to do more and thriving off of one set is pretty unlikely. And so when I see a comment like, oh, he trains hard six days a week, must be steroids. I am usually not too harsh on them because I know I'm talking to either a beginner or an intermediate who has just been coddled. They latched onto these marketers who are like, don't do too much. Like you can't recover from more than this. You probably can if you build up to it over time. And at this point, I've had about a decade of lifting and a decade of endurance training before that. And you can build up to a lot. And you might need to for some people to fulfill your potential if you want to go down that road. Now, if you don't, also totally fine. But don't whinge and moan and cry about it when you don't get the results that you want. And I don't think it's a coincidence that high-intensity training arose after the introduction of anabolic steroids. If you look at the Silver Era, a lot of them were doing fairly high volume, or at least moderately high volume. It was not uncommon to do 20, 25, 30, 35, maybe even 40 working sets in a workout. But when anabolic steroids were introduced, okay, these guys are bigger, they're stronger, they're doing more systemic fatigue, they are more sensitive to the stimulus because of the anabolics, and so yeah, maybe they can get away with one set. But if you're a natural and you've been training for many years and you have that repeated bout effect, a single set to failure just is not that taxing, especially on upper body movements. Now, if someone is doing one set to failure on like RDLs, I could maybe see an argument, but man, if you do one set of cable lateral raises and you're like, yep, that's my set for the week, 
as a natural lifter, you're probably not going to get anywhere close to your potential. And if you were doing higher volume before, you might not even maintain on that. And again, I want to say that there are going to be some people watching this, listening to this, who maybe you're doing too much and you would be better off scaling things back, at least temporarily. That does happen. But for the vast majority of people, I think they are doing too little and not doing it hard enough. And this is something that is not going to be particularly palatable to the average person, but it's the truth. Anyway, it has to be individual, but I think for a lot of people, especially if you're in that intermediate phase, experimenting with pushing things upward a little bit is probably a good idea, especially if it's for a lagging area and you want to specialize in bringing that muscle group up. For a lot more information on this kind of stuff, you can check out my books. They will have all the details that you need to maximize your potential because, again, it is quite individual. Thank you, everyone, for the support, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.